and welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Alex Redmond. Before we start, please be advised that this show may contain sensitive material as we are showing before and after pictures of breast augmentation surgery. But for those that are interested in getting this, millions of women choose to undergo breast augmentation every year to improve their appearance, their self-esteem, and maybe improve their lives. Breast augmentation is one of the most popular and common types of plastic surgery in the United States today. So how do you choose the right shape and the right size for you and your lifestyle or the right product? Dr. Scott Engel of Sarasota Plastic Surgery Center is here to answer all your questions about breast augmentation. Dr. Engel is board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. He is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and completed a fellowship in aesthetic surgery at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome to the show, Dr. Engel. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, we're really happy to have you. This, is, this show is actually by popular request because we've had so many people who have been interested. When are you going to get someone that does plastic surgery and uh, specifically breast augmentation because it is one of the if not the most popular surgery elective in the United States. It is. It is. For the first time uh, in 2011, the statistics from the American Society of Plastic Surgeons show that it is the most popular uh, uh, procedure performed in the United States last year. Who's getting it? Who's getting this surgery done? Well, um, many people of all ages, actually, as long as you're healthy, women, uh, women 18 years old up to 60 and 70 years old are having breast augmentation or breast rejuvenation surgery, not just implants, but rejuvenating their breasts to, look them, to make them look more youthful and more, uh, more aesthetically pleasing. All right, this is a great opportunity, a great time to pick up the phone and call 361-4675. That's 361-4675. And ask Dr. Angle a question. If you've been considering getting breast augmentation or breast surgery, or maybe you have a friend, maybe you have a daughter that's interested in exploring the possibilities. So go ahead and call us. All right, let's talk a little bit about the different types that you can get. Can you get, um, obviously you can get round, or there are others that are slightly different shaped? There are different shapes, but the most common used in the U.S. are round implants. And so uh, uh, round implants and then the type of material that's in the implant. And there's a saline and silicone implants. They're both available and FDA approved today. All right, so between silicone and saline, because in the past there's been a lot of controversy about which one should I get. Have they upped the safety standards with silicone now? They have. Um, in 2006, the FDA approved uh, silicone implants with uh, uh, the understanding that there'll be post-approval studies making sure it's a safe uh, and effective device. And so we continue to have patients that are studied to make sure that it is safe. And all the studies so far have shown that there is no uh, safe, there is no uh, uh, consequences or association between silicone and breast cancer or polymyalgia rheumatica or lupus. There's never been any association between them and so that's the why the FDA uh, released uh, the moratorium uh, and, and say they're safe devices. So now a patient has a choice um, knowing that a, say, a silicone implant is a safe device. All right, our phone number is 361-4675. 361-4675. We'd love to hear from you with your questions about breast augmentation surgery. So why would you choose one over the other? What what are the advantages or the disadvantages of getting silicone or saline? Sure. Uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a choice. So the, a woman has to feel comfortable with what's in her body. Now, we can give recommendations, and in my opinion, most often a silicone implant is a much more natural appearing implant. Um, it, it just feels more like a breast um, feels more like a native breast and doesn't feel unnatural. There's also less rippling, uh, especially for either breast reconstruction or breast cancer patients or patients with very, very thin tissue. A silicone implant just gives a more natural appearance. The advantages and disadvantages are saline. Uh, if, in, if you'd like me to show you, sure. this is a saline implant. So if a saline implant ruptures, the good news is that you'll know right away you have a rupture and that the saline solution that's in there is normal to our body and uh, will just get absorbed. The downside to it is that uh, then you walk around with an asymmetry, one breast size different than the other. Um, and so uh, w those are the advantages and disadvantages. When you look at a silicone implant, you can feel yourself. Uh, it feels more natural. It's a much more natural feel to the, to, uh, to the touch. And, and uh, the with silicone, if a silicone implant ruptures, uh, the, the, you don't know right away. You may not know right away. And so you may have changes like pain or some hardness. We would recommend that you do some studies like an MRI to see if there is a rupture. But 
our studies have shown there is no bad effects of silicone. Your body will just wall off the silicone and, and, and will not cause any, uh, any harmful effects. All right, now these are quite heavy. They feel, I, I mean, I would imagine that if, if I were a 34 C cup or something, is that about right? What, are, what would this be for? Well, that's, it's funny. A, a lot of women ask that. Well, what is this? And mm -hmm. uh, cup numbers for the cc's of implants and the cups are really just gauges to see what fits your body. Every implant, just because a friend has a certain size implant, doesn't mean it's going to look good on you because you may have certain different native breast tissue. You may have a smaller chest before we put in the implant. So in someone who doesn't have a lot of breast tissue and putting in, this is a 400 cc implant, in someone who doesn't have a lot of breast tissue, this would be maybe a C size. Mm -hmm. However, if someone already has a good size breast and then you uh, you know put this in well then you're bringing them to a, either a full C so, or a full D so it's really got to be something that you've got to try on and I have patients try on sizes to see what they like under a shirt and so it's not one size fits all now if you're small busted mm -hmm. would would you be better off going a size up if you're thinking about uh, getting getting something done or if you just want to enhance your breasts you just want to make them perkier stand up more sure would you get the same size that you are or would you go up a size well no it depends and we don't just decide what size you are and then put that same in what right. I will do is, is just literally try on this size implant and say okay well you know this is a 300 cc implant and does this feel comfortable and do you like it and so um, it all just depends on what your activity level is and what you feel comfortable in a shirt and that's really the best way to determine the size is really trying it on and seeing what well, it looks good. All right, if you have questions that you'd like to ask Dr. Scott Engel, go ahead and pick up the phone call 361-4675. That's 361-4675 because we are discussing breast augmentation tonight. And uh, we can go ahead if you like and show one of the pictures that you have because sure. you have number one, you have patient number one mm -hmm. and she has a before and an after picture. So we're going to go ahead and bring that up on the screen and we're going to tell you what uh, Dr. Engel is going to go ahead and tell you what was done here. Sure. So this is a young woman um, who was 26 years old and she wanted larger breasts. And as you can see on the left, this is her before picture, um, she, uh, she doesn't have very much breast tissue at all. And so any implant at all is going to make look a little bit augmented. So you need to be careful. And I, I recommended that she stay conservative. And so we used a 325 cc implant. She tried them on and uh, it fit to her body and so uh, you know some women uh, want a augmented appearance some women don't want that augmented appearance and, and the larger you go uh, the more uh, augmented that's going to look especially with such little tissue so you can see uh, just with her she was she was thrilled uh, it was a small incision that was placed underneath her breast this implant was placed under the muscle which I generally like to place under the muscle most commonly mm -hmm. um, and uh, she loved her results all right, and we have our first phone call. We have Laura on the line. Hi, Laura. Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. What would you like to ask Dr. Scott Angle? Hello. Hello. You're on the air. Good afternoon. My name is Laura Chairman. Uh, I would like to ask the doctor uh, for I had in this moment I have silicone. I would like to know uh, for how long I can I, I had problem in my right right breast silicone. For how long I need her to, I can keep the silicone because I need her to share, but for how long I can keep the silicone? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> the, the manufacturers generally say, and we say that around 10, implants last for about 10 years. They're not a lifelong device. They're not something you're going to have forever. And so um, if there's nothing wrong with the implant, you don't have to get it removed. Uh, but generally, uh, you, you will uh, notice that there might be some hardening or, or, or maybe as you age, your breast may droop and you may want to go a different size. And so, uh, you know, they roughly, we, I generally tell patients they last about 10 years. Uh, but if there's nothing wrong with the implant, I've seen patients that have had implants for 20 years or so. Uh, it's just making sure that you continue to monitor and making sure there's nothing wrong with the implant. So uh, that would be my, uh, my suggestion to you. All right, thank you for your call, Laura. And if you'd like to ask Dr. Engel a question, go ahead and call 361-4675. 361-4675, and he will answer more of your questions about breast augmentation right after the break. So please stay with us.
Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Alex Redman. Dr. Scott Engel is joining us today and he is telling you everything that you want to know about breast augmentation surgery. But before we continue, and we do have a phone call holding, please be advised that this show may contain sensitive material as we are showing some graphics about before and after breast augmentation surgery. And now we have Caroline on the line. Hi, Caroline, thank you for calling the show. Go ahead with your question. Thank you, yes. Doctor, want to know, I have the opposite problem. My breasts are very large and very saggy. What, we, what can we do about, uh, instead of augmentation, making them smaller and making them look better? Sure, yeah. A, a lot of women with their large breasts that often wonder why women with small breasts want larger breasts. But in fact, having large breasts can cause problems like pain or uh, uh, problems finding right bras or, go with, or, with that, or, or doing certain activities. Uh, you can have a breast reduction or a breast lift, and we call that a mastopexy or, or a breast reduction. And so uh, you can have a procedure which we make incisions to decrease the size of the breast and lift up any drooping, lift up the breast if it's drooping. Um, a little bit different, but certainly will improve some of the uh, tension on your neck and shoulders and give you a more aesthetic looking breast. And does that have a long recovery? Um, it's not. It's about a, a week where you're really kind of taking it easy. A total, I usually say a total of about three weeks before you're really back and doing any exercising, but uh, it, it's not a very long recovery. Mm -mm. All right, thank you for calling the show. And the phone lines are once again open, 361-4675, 361-4675. Dr. Scott Engel is here answering your questions about breast augmentation, and we're live tonight. All right, uh, Dr. Engel, I believe we also have an email right now. We have an email coming up. Okay, and why, why don't we go ahead then and we'll show our next picture. Would you like to see uh, patient number two? Sure, patient number two. All right, let's go ahead and have patient number two brought up on the screen. We're going to show you some more before and after pictures so you can see some of the surgeries that Dr. Engels performed. Here's so uh, I chose this picture. Our first patient had a silicone breast implant, and this is a young patient who was uh, 19 years old. Uh, silicone implants have been approved for patients 22 years and older. So this was a younger girl who uh, wanted saline implants. So we had saline saline implants placed, and these were larger size implants, again placed under the muscle to give her a more natural appearance, and a 425 cc's. Now she had bigger breasts to begin with, but again she wanted just a little more volume, and so with a 425 cc implant, uh, it just gives her a nice round shape and, and, and uh, a good uh, cosmetic looking breast. When somebody has a surgery like this, where is the incision? Do you go? There's, there's several different incisions you can make. The most common that I make are either under the breast, in the crease, we'll call the inframammary fold beneath the breast, or around the nipple, around the areola. Um, those are the most common ways to do it. You can also place an incision in the axilla or the armpit. Uh, you can also place an incision in the belly button. I'm, I don't particularly like that procedure because it's a long distance, but those are the typical incisions that you can make. <clears throat> and, and what type of a scar would one typically have? It's usually only about three or four centimeters, a really small incision, and they're really imperceptible. Uh, the one under the breast will be hidden by a, a bra or a bathing suit. Obviously, the one around the nipple will be, um, won't be exposed if you're wearing a bra or bathing suit as well. And they hide really well. All right, go ahead and call 361-4675 with your questions about breast augmentation surgery. That's 361-4675. How painful is this surgery? It's an uncomfortable surgery. It, 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 um, there, there is some discomfort, but it's not. Um, it, it's 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 not something that's debilitating. I mean, certainly patients a day or two have a little bit of discomfort, but um, once uh, two or three days go by, after that week, you're really feeling much better. And um, light activity. I generally ask for light activity for the first um, uh, week, uh, and, and really no cardio activity for about three weeks. Cardi you know. All right, thanks for calling the show. Marjorie, what would you like to ask Dr. Engel? Yes, I'm a, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely, you are on the air. Thank you. Um, I'm in my early 60s, and I have um, sagging, small, and dense breasts. Up until what age can somebody have something done about that? Well, as long as you're healthy and you know, there's no medical conditions that would uh, 
uh, halt you from having your procedure, you can have procedures up into the, you know, through your 70s. Nowadays, people are, are living uh, longer and healthier lives. So um, really, uh, as long as you're cleared by your uh, general doctor and that you're getting your normal mammograms, which is obviously very important that you continue to get your yearly mammograms, uh, uh, there, there is, there's no particular age that I choose as long as you're healthy. Thank you. That gives me hope. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you for you. your question. And we're going to go ahead and bring up our next email question. And while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and give you the phone number again. Our number is 361-4675. And we'll take that question in just a minute. Our email question is, my daughter has one breast that's larger than the other one. Can she have surgery to th make them the same? That's a good question. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Nobody is symmetric. Everybody is uh, is different when you split down the middle. So one breast is generally larger than the other, and some people it's more than the other, uh, or more asymmetric than the other. So obviously, with one breast being less or larger than the other, your choice is to reduce one side or enlarge the other side, or do a combination of two if it's very, very uh, dramatic. And so, um, absolutely, and, and I do that all the time. Uh, sometimes we're even placed in different size implants to try to make that more symmetric. And so. Um, uh, that, that, that happens all the time. All right, and we do have another phone call on the line. Hi, Susan, welcome to Local Doctors on Call. What would you like to ask Dr. Engel? I'd like to know about uh, breast uh, reduction. Okay, breast reduction. Sure, yeah, um, like I said, it, p p people with large breasts often have a hard time finding good brassiers. They have a hard time with activities. So a breast reduction is a great procedure to decrease the size of your breasts, uh, take off tension off of your neck. If you have rashes beneath your breasts, um, it's a procedure that's, a, a, that's done as an outpatient. Uh, takes about two and a half, three hours to perform the procedure and, and really with great results. Thank you for your call. And if you have a question that you'd like to ask, go ahead and call 361-4675, 361-4675, because it's a great opportunity to speak to Dr. Engel before you go in for a consultation. So we talked a little bit about the mammograms. So can people get mammograms after they have implants? That's Ab the question. Absolutely. In fact, the imaging that we have nowadays, uh, all, a lot of the breast centers are geared and know about breast implants. And so uh, you absolutely have to continue to have a mammogram. When the implant's placed under the muscle, it's, a little easy, it's, it's much easier to detect any kind of differences in your breast tissue. Um, patients around the age of 40, I make sure we have a screening mammogram, a, a, a mammogram before we put the implant in to make sure that there's any changes that occur, we'll have that baseline. And so uh, you absolutely can have a mammogram. All right, and now we have Amy on the line. Hi, Amy. Hi, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. Go ahead with your question. We're ready for you. Uh, I'm an avid exerciser, and I wanted to find out how long should one wait to exercise after augmentation? Sure, absolutely. Um, I'm a little bit conservative, and I have my patients wait for a total of three weeks before you're doing any heavy lifting. Um, you know, that first week you're going to be a little bit sore and it's okay to go ahead and just do some gentle walking around, but no cardio, uh, cardio activity or heavy lifting. I like to wait about three weeks. All right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you for your call. And the phone lines are open now, 361-4675. That's 361-4675. We will take another email question that came in. But while we're doing that, uh, what about the anesthesia that you use? Mm -hmm. um, are you out, completely out? Most of the time it's general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple breast augmentation takes an hour, an hour and a half of general anesthesia. And uh, as long as you're uh, healthy without any um, uh, major health problems, it's a very quick and easy procedure. But you're out completely. All right, now we have our email question coming up. Okay, here it is. It is, do implants have, oh, do implants have a lifetime warranty? That's sure. a great question. It is a great question. And <laughs> the, 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 manufa the two main manufacturers of breast implants do have warranties. Uh, they're generally for about 10 years. Um, but so they, no, they are not a lifetime, it's not a lifetime warranty. You can actually buy f a longer warranty, but it's a, it's, I believe it's a 10 year warranty that they'll replace if you have a, uh, if you have a rupture. All right, that was yeah, a, great, a question. great question. So, so if it has a 10 year warranty, mm -hmm. In 10 years, do you have to go in and just have a new one put in? No, if there's, I guess if there's nothing wrong with it, I don't find a reason to take it out. Um, but uh, they'll, they'll warranty for about 10 years. But if there's nothing wrong, I say leave it in. All right, and mm -hmm. Tom is on the line. Hi, Tom. Yes, hello. You may go ahead with your question. Yes, um, I heard the doc talk about the 
fact that uh, breast implants won't affect a uh, MRI. Uh, it's possible they may not affect an MRI, but uh, my mother died of kidney cancer uh, after she had tumors growing in her breast. Um, her other breast, uh, she had um, a implant in there, and the uh, the doctor would look at these uh, these scans, and all he would see was would be a big white circle. And he says, "Don't worry, you're okay." And behind it was grow where well, the tumors were growing behind it, and then they metastasized her kidney, and she died very quickly after that. Sure. Well, you know, it depends on when it was, but imaging today is much more advanced than it used to be. Uh, in addition, it sounds like that implant was placed above, above the muscle, which is why majority of times I place it below the muscle so that your breast tissue is not being uh, um, uh, hidden or it's not being uh, distorted by the implant. And so, um, you know, it's certainly imaging is, is, is much, much better than it used to be. It's hard to say, obviously, in her situation, but it's really... Uh, you know, we have, have really uh, uh, good techniques to, to determine breast cancer. And thank you for your call, Tom. And if you'd like to call us, 361-4675. That's 361-4675 with your questions about breast augmentation. Actually, that, that does bring up an interesting point because since you choose to put it underneath the muscle, mm -hmm. the breast tissues on top, you get a much better visibility Absolutely. of any changes that might occur in there. Absolutely. Now, if somebody... Um, comes in, you said that you give them a full screening to rule out, obviously, in case they had anything mm -hmm. going on there. Sure. You need, I mean, you need a full exam. We're doctors. We still do a full exam to make sure they don't feel any masses. And if there's a family history of breast cancer or if, um, or if you're due for your mammogram, I won't proceed with surgery unless I see a documented mammogram in the last year if you're 40 years or older. Um, or even 35 with a family history of breast cancer, I'll make sure I see that mammogram to have a baseline um, and, and, and go from there, absolutely. All right, when we come back from our break, Dr. Engel will be here to answer more of your questions about breast augmentation surgery. It's a great time to write the number down, 361-4675, or go ahead and call us, and we'll take those questions when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Alex Redman, and today we are talking about breast augmentation. So please be advised that this show may contain sensitive material because we're showing before and after pictures about breast augmentation. All right, doctor, there's, there's a lot of things that we hear, you know, uh, discounts on breast augmentation surgery, and we hear about a lot of people performing these surgeries, but how do you know who to go to? I mean, if you're having a breast augmentation, and someone is a general surgeon, but they're performing plastic surgery, is that the person you should go to or are there any special credentials? Sure, it's very, very important that you know about the background and the training of your surgeon. Um, I'm a bo board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery and I'm a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. My partners, Dr. Braun Graham, Dr. Jim Schmidt, and Dr. David Mobley are all members of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons and board certified. And I think you have a symbol we that do. you want to show. We need so to did... see this symbol. This mm -hmm. symbol here shows that we are members of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons and we're board certified in plastic surgery. There's a lot, uh, doctors can perform in their own, uh, in their own offices any kind of surgery they want, you know, office-based surgery. They're not mandated. Now, uh, at Sarasota Plastic Surgery, we have a licensed ambulatory surgery center and uh, we are, uh, we, we have the highest credentials as far as training for, for performing these procedures. You need to make sure that your doctor is a board certified plastic surgeon. Um, and, and that symbol is the biggest way to, the best way to find that out. The, unfortunately, there are, pe there are people who are not adequately trained and want to do elective cosmetic surgery for the financial gains. And uh, by making sure and seeing that symbol, you know that your doctor is gonna follow the ethical principles of our society. Um, and it's been trained appropriately. All right, we have Lynn on the line. Hi, Lynn, thank you for calling the show. What would you like to ask Dr. Scott Engel? Okay, I, I'm 73. I've lost a lot of weight. I uh, exercised, I've been exercising at a gym for three years. I got muscles all over my body. I'm a really strong lady. And if they last for 10 years, I'm all set. I was a C cup and um, I like them perky. 
Sure, absolutely. Um, I think one of the things that you have to understand is that putting it uh, many times, and especially as we get older, our skin is not as tight as it used to be. And so putting in an implant sometimes is not your only answer. You can't just lift the breast with a, a large implant, otherwise you'll just have large droopy breasts. And so the, one of the things there is actually doing incisions that actually lift the breast up. So one of the ways you can figure that is if you lift your breast up and you like that size, then you just need a breast lift or something called the mastopexy. However, if you lift it up and you want to still be a little bit larger, then you do a combined procedure where you're going to augment the breast and you'll also lift it at the same time called the mastopexy augmentation. So that's kind of how you can get a gauge uh, of really what you need. Do you need an aug just an augmentation, uh, just a lift, or a lift and an augmentation? Thanks for your call. So, so what's the next step if someone decides they want it done? Sure. Well, again, making sure you're going to uh, know the education and the training of your surgeon. And I'd be happy to see uh, patients in our office at Sarasota Plastic Surgery. Um, and we have our information here for you to see. You can give out that phone number. It's 941-366-8897. Uh, uh, and sitting down with a board-certified plastic surgeon to really know your options and just get, get the information and be educated. And that's our biggest thing, making sure patients are educated about what they're going through. So the best thing to do for anyone is to come in for a consultation and see if the fit's right. Absolutely. All right, and also if you'd like to reach out to Dr. Scott Engel, you can reach him at the phone number, which again is 366-8897. That's 366-8897. Also at sarasotaplasticsurgery.com. We'd like to thank you for being on the show, Dr. Engel, and we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your very busy day to spend it with us on Local Doctors on Call. We'll see you next time, and remember, it's your health.